So everybody, we're here uh, today to talk about the ultimate team building experience. I got Ray Sidnor and Nat Alston with me. I'm AJ Ali, your host, and uh, my co-hosts. Uh, they will they will chime in in a second. Uh, I'm the uh, founder of the Love Is the Answer movement, and we're going to be talking today about how we can bring three really incredible programs together. Uh, the the film Walking Wild Black Love Is the Answer uh, is is the genesis of, of, of this, we, we're presenting the Lead and Serve with Love class uh, today, which includes the film and, and many other elements. We're going to be presenting the Shooting for Peace Celebrity Basketball, uh, headed up by Ray Sidnor. Uh, we're going to be talking about the TV series, Love is the Answer TV series, as part of this, uh, this experience, which is a, roughly a three-month-long program. And we're offering this to four organizations this year. And uh, Greg, good to see you, man. It's been a long time, Greg Harrell. So, uh, <laughs> so we're gonna uh, kick it off with Nat and then Ray uh, saying hello and sharing a little bit about themselves, and then we'll run through the program and we'll, we'll open it up for Q and A uh, pretty pretty quickly as well. Nat, all right, AJ. Uh... I, I got to throw a little humor in there. Welcome, everybody. He always says Nat and then Ray and Ray. So he started alphabetically, uh, A <laughs> before S. And I always had that problem all the time because when anybody wanted to say, well, we start with the group, let's start with the A's. So I basically said, well, that's been the story of my life from elementary school up to where I am right now. But again, <laughs> welcome. Glad to have everyone on board. Uh, as AJ mentioned, you see up there on the Zoom screen, I'm Nat Austin, and I've got a background of two, uh, AJ's book, Love is the Answer, uh, of which uh, AJ tapped me to be one of the contributing authors on that book. So uh, I guess I can say I'm an author, even though that my I don't claim the whole book, but I got a section in there. So <laughs> I may be a, a, a struggling author, shall we say. But one of the things that I'm also proud about, too, that you see in the background, uh, the National Association of African Americans in Human Resources. We are a 25-year-old organization uh, nationwide. We represent 7,000 African Americans and people of like-minded. It can be whatever nationality and ethnicity that they want, but we primarily focus on African Americans in Human Resources. 7,000, and we're in seven, uh, 30 states. Uh, I'm one of the 12 founders, been with the organization, as I said, from the beginning 25 years ago. And the last 11 years, I've served as the chairman of the national board. And as far as AJ Ali and Love is the Answer, I've known AJ, quick story, I, I knew his wife before I met AJ. And I always tell this, his wife and I were part of a boot camp here in Columbia, Maryland, of which I am here in Columbia. And for 15 years, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 a.m. in the morning, I saw Jane and I were out there with other boot camp people. And we tried to get AJ in there, but it didn't work. Didn't work at all. But it's his too wife early, and man. I became too early. very good. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, his wife and I became very good friends, and she introduced me to AJ. And from AJ, the introduction, he started Love is the Answer here in Howard County. Uh, I signed on with him. And I also brought, as a strategic partner, which we'll get in a little bit later, our National Association of African Americans in Human Resources. So we've been a strong strategic partner with him. We look forward to what we're doing now in 2024. And we just feel that this is the way that we need to go as far as human capital, human resources, being a strategic partner with love is the answer. So again, thank you, AJ, for what you're doing. And we sincerely, on the behalf of our president, Erica Broadwater, and the National Association of African Americans in Human Resources, we sincerely thank you for allowing us to be a strategic partner with you. Happy to have you on the team, my friend. Thank you so much. And no, I'm never getting up at 6 a.m. to work out. I had those days long ago. My knees, my feet, my back, and, and other body parts are thanking me for staying in bed and getting my rest these days. 
<laughs> is, is someone else on here who's familiar with uh, working out? And that's Ray Sidnor. Go ahead, Ray. Hey, man. Greetings, everyone. It's good to see everybody smiling face. It's great, great to be alive and uh, be included in this. My name is Ray Sidnor, and I'm I'm the founder of uh, Shooting for Peace. Shooting for Peace is um a grassroots mentoring program. Right. What I like to tell people all the time is that we do what's known as sports ministry is what we do. So we do a lot of after school programs, summer camps, uh, uh, celebrity basketball games and then special events. Like I have one coming up in February. Um, that's a, a one day clinic. I'm a former professional football player. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, I played with the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I was on that first Super Bowl team. And uh, shooting for peace was born out of out of that. You know, I know that sports is a great bridge, a great common denominator. It's a great way to meet people. And just by way of introduction, I'm a huge Ravens fan. So, um, you know, I'm a Baltimore boy, so I root for the home team. <laughs> so, yeah, AJ, there you go. <laughs> so I, I, I root I root for the home team, man. I'm diehard, man. I I live and die with those guys. But uh, back in 20. Uh, 15 when we had the riots here in Baltimore, Maryland, um, uh, with Freddie Gray and and so at, so on and so forth. Uh, I had a meeting with the police chief and and uh, of course Chief Melvin Russell that a lot of you guys know, uh, and we decided that they had intel it's going to be a one year anniversary riot, and we decided that we would be part of the intervention and and Greg Harrell who's on the call um, also uh, he was part of the planning committee that we when we put this thing together. And so what we did with Shooting for Peace does is we do uh we, we go into a city, we do citywide events. We'll speak in every school um, in the community, um, elementary, middle, high school, you name it. We'll speak in every school. We share a message of love. We work with law enforcement um, to uh, foster communication between law enforcement and, um, and the regular community. And then what we did in Baltimore, in one week, we spoke in 122 schools. We spoke in 25 schools a day. Uh, we spoke to over 98,000 school age kids in one week. And then as a way of topping it off, celebration, bringing people together, we had a celebrity basketball game at Coppin State um, University. And, and Coppin State, their gym holds about 4,300 people. And we had over 5,000 people at the game. It was standing room only. And, um, you know, it was a great event. And from there, we just started branching out, taking it across the country. We've done it in several different cities um, around the country. And we found that it's a great way to uh, get people, you know, people come out for sports. They, people show up for sports when they won't show up for anything else because, you know, that word fan is short for fanatic. And so um, people are fanatic about um, their sports. But what we found is this is a great way to um, bring people together. And I, I, I'll end with one thing that happened that week. At the end of the week, um, Commissioner Davis, who was the uh, police chief in Baltimore, Maryland, what he's, um, I went up to him and I, and I said to him, I said, Commissioner, I said, listen, man, thank you for allowing your police officers to be a part of um, this outreach. And he said, no, Mr. Sidney, thank you. He said, this was the number one requested detail um, in on Baltimore City Police Department that week. And he said that our morale in the police department went up tremendously. And one of the things that we saw happen was when we brought professional athletes, and you may not know me, but you know the Philadelphia Eagles, you know the different teams, the, NBA teams and all of that stuff. But when the officers walked into school with the prof with the professional athletes, they gave them what's known with what the kids call and people call it, gave them street credibility. They know they were accepted. They were part of the team. We had a common denominator. And that's what we'll be able to bring to this initiative. So um, it's great to see everybody. I see a lot of people I know and friends. And, uh, you know, God bless you. All right. So thank you, Ray. Thank you, Nat. We got a lot of incredible people on this Zoom. I know most of you. And I know you're incredible. And I wish this was one of those times where we could just all go around the room and, and share all the great things that we're doing. Maybe we can save some time at the end uh, for that. But um, what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the ultimate team building experience, uh, which is three exciting, I'm not going to say easy. It's not easy. It's three exciting steps to transforming a community. And by community, I mean, it can be a company, it can be a city, it can be a county, it can be a little town, it can be any gathering of people where they're in community together, uh, but they might be lacking common unity. 
common unity. Put those two words together, we got community and we take it to another level with love and we can have that beloved community that Martin Luther King Jr. talked about so much and so many of us want to strive for. I know that y'all do on this uh, on this Zoom. So here are the the three steps. This is a collaboration between Love is the Answer, between Shooting for Peace, and between uh, NAAAHR, the National Association of African Americans and Human Resources. We're looking for four groups in the country to, uh, to, 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 to buy into this program, to bring it to their town. And here's what it includes. It's a three month long experience. The first two months are 50 to 100 people, minimum of 50, maximum of, of 100, going through Love is the Answers Lead and Serve with Love class. Now, this class, I'm going to put the, the link in the chat. Uh, you all have this in, your, in the email that you received, uh, but I'm going to share that link anyway. Uh, this is a class that teaches empathetic leadership, social responsibility, teamwork, and much, much more. The class meets virtually for two hours a week for eight weeks, and the cohort, uh, the next cohort starts February 22nd. Uh, but we're what we're doing is we're looking for groups that will book a minimum of 50 people, a maximum of 100, and they can their cohort for the class will start at an agreed upon time. We're going to carve out a three month period for those 50 to 100 people to go through the class, participate in a class project, which is the Shooting for Peace celebrity basketball game, and then we're going to film at that game. We're going to film the Love is the Answer TV series, uh, an episode of it. And the show, the TV show, uh, is basically this. It's 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 marrying a flash mob together with undercover boss. If you've ever seen a flash mob, you know, a bunch of people go into a shopping mall, somebody hits play on the music, a bunch of people start dancing, jumping around, and it's all choreographed, and then the music stops and they all just leave, right? That's a lot of fun, but very little meaning. Now, fun is good because, you know, you can uplift somebody, you bring them out of a funk, you know, and, and really make their day. But we want to put more meat on the bones and, and, and have fun, but also have it to be a lot more meaningful. So if any of you have ever seen Undercover Boss, that's a TV program that's really popular where the CEO of a company will put on a disguise and spend time with his or her people for, for days or weeks. And then at the end of the show, they do a reveal where the per one of the employees that was in the in the program, actually, they have several employees that wind up getting blessings from the boss. And usually it's cash and, and some other things. Right. So they they take care of people. That's what we're going to do with this show, with the Love is the Answer show. We're going to get a bunch of people in a community together to give a surprise blessing to someone in that community, one of their own, that needs help. And what we're going to do is when we have the, the the class, the eight weeks of going through the class, there, people are going to be learning about how to give, how to be how to be better lovers of the people in their community. And we're going to spend a little time in each session of the class planning the, planning the celebrity basketball game. All the students are going to help to plan that event. They'll be working closely with Ray. They'll be cl working closely with Nat and I on all of that. And then when the when the when the game time comes, that's when we're going to experience something great that that Ray's going to share a, a little bit more uh, with you uh, in a moment. And and at halftime, we're going to call someone out from the audience, and that person is is going to be there thinking that they're there for one thing, but they're really there for something else. We might ask them to come and share a little bit about some nonprofit that they're working with, or we might even ask them to share about some of the things going on in their life. And then we're going to surprise them with anywhere from five to $10,000 in cash on the spot. We're going to surprise them with, with gifts and, and prizes and, and hugs and all kinds of love. There will be tears of joy. And we're going to film all that and put it into a 12 minute long episode that will go on social media. Now, here's the kicker. 
once all that is over with, there's going to be a GoFundMe tied to each single person that we bless. So the people that are at the event can bless them, but also people two, three weeks later, two months later, they might see that video on, on YouTube or uh, Insta or, or X or Facebook or LinkedIn, and they'll have an opportunity to pitch in as well, to continue supporting that family. And that's that's love in action. That's what the class is all about, teaching people how to love. The celebrity basketball game is coming together to do to, to, to show love to people, to bring love into the community. And then the TV series episode is there to, to, to just bring it all together and, and memorialize it so that a year from now, 10 years from now, people will still be able to be inspired by that. And hopefully what we'll do is we'll get a lot of people interested in doing similar things on their own, not necessarily with a celebrity basketball game or a TV series, but just to help people in need. That's our mission, to teach people how to love each other and then empower them to be able to uh, to do that. So that's an overview. And I know that there are probably some folks with some questions. Um, before we get to the first batch of questions, I want to ask Ray if you wouldn't mind to share a little bit about uh, a little bit more about you know what happens in the course of planning and execution of one of these events, the celebrity basketball part. You're you're on mute, Ray. Yeah, so, so I, I just want to tell you it's exciting, you know, um, because one of the things that I left out uh, as it, as it led up to the basketball game and. and those of you all that are from the Baltimore or even watch the national news, there was a lot of turmoil going on in Baltimore at the time. And so um, one year later, in the epicenter of the riots that they had in Baltimore, we, we set up um, a, a, a platform. We did a, a community rally right in the center of North Avenue and Pennsylvania Avenue. And, and Greg Harrell, Greg was there. Greg's a former NFL player also. Um, but here's what happens. People come together. You know, um, I mean, the whole community comes together. So we, we we put together, George Van Hook was on the planning community committee, uh, one of Baltimore City school commissioners. So we brought a, a group of people from all walks of life together to say, how can we help solve the problem? And at the time we weren't working with Love and Sands. We had shooting for peace because we wanted to shift the paradigm. One of the things that people ask me all the time when I tell them I'm from Baltimore, they say, Ray, you grew up in the hood, huh? And I say, no, I didn't grow up in the hood. I grew up in a neighborhood, right? And so we coined a phrase called putting the neighbor back in the hood, recreating neighborhoods. And that's what we want to do. And so uh, when we, when, 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 what we do is we partner with the faith community. You know, I'm an ordained minister myself. So we partner with the faith community. We partner with churches. We partner with community organizations. We partner with leaders, people that have the same mindset, people that have the same goals that we have. And then what we do is we use that opportunity with the sports thing to bring people together for a common goal and celebrate you know, our successes more than we focus on our failures. One of the things that you learn in sports, um, the one thing that coaches say, and, and a lot of people heard of Bill Parcells, well, they were evaluating some players at one point, and the coach was telling them all the stuff that this this um, particular player couldn't do. And he said, Coach, I don't want to know what he can't do. I want to know what he can do. And there's a lot of stuff that we can do when we work together. When, when people like us come together and we form this community that we're talking about, the, the, the big thing about Nat and AJ with us all working together is shooting for peace was great in terms of being out front and uh, being a face and, and getting people excited. But what we really needed was something with, for su sustainability. And that's what we needed. We needed a lead behind. We needed something that people could hold on to because after people get excited and all of that kind of stuff about, you know, yeah, 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 we had this and we had that. But the, the, the change life comes through what? Discipleship and comes, comes through, you know, consistency. And that's what this partnership does. Thank you, Ray. I'm going to open it up. Any questions so far? And and keep in keep in mind that we're we're looking for four groups anywhere in the country. Uh, we'd love to stay in the Mid Atlantic uh, this year, but if someone says, "Hey, I want you to come to Tulsa, Oklahoma, or Seattle, Washington," uh, we'll go. Uh, because we're going to go where where we're wanted and where where the work is needed. Um, any questions so far? Hey, Jay, it's, it's Marlon. How you been, Doc? It's been All a minute. Right. Uh, I, I, we, we, it, 
we, we keep bumping into each other. Now that I know Ray knows you, now I know this is just ordained that you and I should be hooking up again. Um, I just want to know, how do you define a group? Uh, is that a congregation? Is that just simply a collection of people? What is your definition for a group? Yeah, great question. It, it really can be any group of people that, that, that are between 50 and 100 people. So it can be a it can be a ministry, it can be a, a college, it can be a high school, it can be a company, it can be a nonprofit, uh, it can be just a group of concerned citizens that want to come together and do something special. Yeah. And, 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 can I, can I say, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm passing. I'm good. I'm good, Ray. So um, I just want to share this also. And, and Coach Mike Jarvis, who's on the phone, he'll tell you down in. And we were down in Florida, in Daniel Beach, Florida, and uh, we did a we did an outreach with a developer uh, called Kimco. And uh, with Kimco, what we did was we we did an outreach right there on the strip mall, right on their on on their property for the, for um and it was for the community, but it was also for the tenants. And I got to tell you, they I mean, it brought the community together. Coach and I, we spoke in two or three schools down there. We we did a tag team, and I'm telling you, now, if you got to speak somewhere, do not take Coach Jarvis with you because he's going to make you look bad. I just want you to know that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Coach Jarvis and I, um, we, we spoke in several schools, and, and then we did the outreach. And it wasn't that we had a, a large number of kids there. It, it, it wasn't. We didn't really have a lot of kids at that particular outreach. But what we did have was we did have a sense of community. We had law enforcement there. We had the school uh, people from the school there. We had people from the community. We had business owners, and they all rallied around. You know, um, they rallied around the vision. You know, because when you cast a vision, you put it out there. People will attach themselves to the vision, and not only that, they saw our commitment and our love. And you know, love has a way of it's covering a multitude of problems. And so when we when we came out there and we did that, man, I mean, the response was incredible, and 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 that's the opportunity that we have right here. Beautiful. I want to share something with, with y'all. It'll take uh, just a couple of minutes. I'm not going to play this whole clip, but uh, back about uh, 2010, I, you know, I've been involved in television and film and music uh, for, oh my goodness, 40 years. And in Baltimore, uh, I put together a group of guys called the Goodfellas of Baltimore. And we had a show on Fox uh, on the, on, on TV there and it was a show that is very similar to in nature to what we're doing with the Love is the Answer program. This was a show where we had a half a dozen business leaders come together and we would go out and find people in need. And then we get fans of the show to come out with us. And we might have a party uh, or a fashion show or a dinner in order for people to come to those fun events. They had we gave them an offer they couldn't refuse. They had to join what we called the mob. That was mentors of Baltimore. And so everyone who wanted to come out and party had to also come out and, and do some hard work, had to roll up the sleeves. When we did community cleanups, had to go and, and uh, participate in, in helping take care of people who were homeless or rebuilding a house for a family that the house caught on fire, whatever it was. So I'm just going to play a little bit of, of the trailer for that show. You can actually see these episodes on, on YouTube if you go back and look up Goodfellas of Baltimore TV series. I'm going to play a little bit of the trailer just to give you a, a glimpse of what we did with that because the, the formula has already been proven. Uh, with that show, we wound up raising a quarter million dollars for charities we rebuilt a home for a family uh, that, that whose home had caught on fire. We did a lot of other good works around the country, and we had hundreds of volunteers come out to support uh, those efforts. And to this day, uh, people are still talking about it. it. It was a pretty cool experience. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen. Make sure I optimize the clip for video. And I'm gonna play this, and I'm not gonna play the whole thing. Just so you can see a little glimpse. Can you see it? Yeah. Yep. I literally woke up one morning in April with the whole Goodfellas of Baltimore concept just flashed before me.
It woke me up. I believe Baltimore is trying to find its balance. Over uh, 100,000 people out of a job right now in the community. It's all about communication. And then reaching out to the programs, uh, reaching out to the centers and shelters and finding out what their needs are and addressing what those needs are or trying to address them. So it takes all of us coming together to help the community, help Baltimore help its own people. Goodfellas of Baltimore, it's all about helping people. It's about inspiring people to help each other as well. And so we're not the solution. We really aren't. Uh, we're a catalyst. I, I hope that we can become an inspiration. We help a different family every week and we help a different charity every week in the Baltimore area and we invite the community, individuals, corporate sponsors, celebrities, to come along with us and, and be a part of the solution. This first episode of Goodfellas of Baltimore is helping the Kiosi family family whose house was devastated by fire uh, in the summertime. The night of the fire, uh, she had said she smelled smoke or something cooking. We just got out as quickly as we could. The scariest thing was making sure that everyone was out safely. We were standing across the street watching the building burn up so badly. As soon as we went out the front door, the flames and the heat was so intense. That's what I remember the most. So that's a little glimpse of what we're talking about, that kind of spirit. Um, we, we were successful with that show because we were able to get people out of their homes and into the streets to do the work, not just talk about it, not just sit around boardrooms and pontificate about how to help people, but to actually do it. And I I was changed during that experience. I'll never be the same. I've always been a giver, but I experienced something about the the, the power of that that group dynamic when when someone says, hey, let's let's get out there. And let's just make a difference. It doesn't matter whether the person's a Democrat or Republican, white or black, educated or not. If someone has a need, we can fill it. And we don't have to wait around for other people uh, to do that. We don't have to wait for the mayor. We don't have to wait for the city council. We don't have to wait for the police department. We can do it. And, and just this group right here, this, what, 20 people on this on this Zoom? These 20 people have the power to, to change lives. You are all, I know, I know most of you are all making a difference in someone's life right now. Because that's that's who you are. That's your makeup. Imagine the power that can take place if the 20 of us came together and and concentrated our efforts. We could change somebody's life. We could change the trajectory of a of an entire family. For generations, we can we can transform an entire community, and that's the spirit of what we're doing here with with this with this program that includes the class, the celebrity basketball game, and the Love Is the Answer TV series episode. Now, I put in the chat that the sponsoring organization will receive world class training. That's the fifty to one hundred people that will go through the class. They'll receive a massive amount of exposure. We're guaranteeing 100,000 views on social media of the show. So that sponsor, whoever that sponsor is, whether it's a city or a county government or a police department or a company or a ministry, a nonprofit, whatever, will get a lot of exposure for their brand. They're going to generate a ton of goodwill in their community. People will be talking about what happened for the next 12 years. 
I, I, I run into people all the time who participated as volunteers on Goodfellas of Baltimore, and they tell me the same thing. Changed their life. They've been volunteering ever since. And the cost of the program is, is reasonable. It's, it's $57,955 uh, for the whole program with 50 people in it. And the breakdown is this. It's $20,000 for the, for the TV series uh, shoot, and that includes everything A to Z from production to, to, to marketing and, and boosting to make sure that we get at least uh, 100,000 views. Uh, 20,000 is very cheap for, for a TV episode. It's 20,000 for the celebrity basketball game. It's, it's, um, uh, 17,955 for the 50 people to go through the class. And then if people want, if an organization wants to put more than 50 people in, it's just $359 a person, uh, up until the 100th person, that's the maximum that we can that we can take in the program, so it's a total of fifty seven thousand nine hundred fifty five. If you have fifty people, um, now you might be thinking, that's a lot of money. I ain't got that kind of change in my pocket. I certainly don't. But here's the thing, you probably know someone who does. You probably, if you don't have control over that kind of a budget, you probably know someone who does. There's all kinds of places that people can get money from from grant making institutions like foundations uh companies i mean basically any fortune 500 company for that matter any inc 5000 company can afford this it's basically the cost of one entry level person um nat just uh, sent me a message can the organization form a joint venture absolutely nat absolutely this is about common unity this is about people coming together so if there are two or three or 10 organizations in the community that want to pool their resources and get out of their silos and come together and do something special, that's what this is all about. It's about bringing everybody together to do something great for the people in their community. Uh, more AG, questions? If I could, could I chime in a little bit on Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah, please, please. From a business standpoint, folks, and, and our national organization out there, if you're a nonprofit, I always say also, as AJ mentioned, I mentioned the idea of a joint venture. Think about when we look at this training and we're talking about leadership, teamwork, and particularly social responsibility. A lot of your companies here in Baltimore, for an example, or throughout the country, have what they call social responsibility, social citizenship. And your company, or if you're a nonprofit, nonprofit, you're going to put some money into a bank. And I'll put on, give you an example, M&T, the bank there with the Ravens, have a major corporate responsibility to the community. So don't think that you have to go through this, as AJ mentioned, alone. Form that joint partnership where both of you benefit. 25 or 50 from one group, 25 from another, you form that joint venture. And particularly, I'm a corporate person, particularly in this area now, we do need leadership. Whether it's servant leadership, empathetic leadership, we need leadership. Also that social responsibility to the community. And last but not least, teamwork. I'll, when I do my training in terms of team, I always say together, everyone achieves more. That's my acronym on teamwork. Together, everyone achieves more. So if you're thinking about having a organization in your, your ministry and you need to bring them together, formulate that teamwork, the byproduct of going through this training is I believe you'll come out far more cohesive in terms of that team coming together being very clear on the mission and vision for not just love is the answer, but for also the byproduct for your particular organization. And then you tie in wrapping around with that social responsibility of having that other organization being a part, a strategic partner in what you're trying to do as an organization. So if you need any guidance on that a little bit, that's my area of expertise 
in terms of that corporate, because as AJ mentioned, with our love is the answer and the National Association of African Americans and Human Resources, I bring that corporate C-suite environment. My years of experience is in working with major corporations such as Marriott. I spent time with them, Holiday Inns and others. And all of my experience has been on a corporate level, leaving the corporate America as a C-suite executive. So I understand how organizations or corporations work and also understand when they're talking about a social responsibility to the community. So just want to share that with you. That's some of the expertise that AJ has brought on as far as myself and others being part of the team. Thank you, Nat. Uh, Rev, Marlon, you got your hand up. Yes, sir. Uh, let me take it down before I forget. Uh, so the, the, the ultimate question is, after this cohort graduates, we, can, we now develop these partners. What's the end game? Uh, you, you, you've now graduated. You've got this partner. What, what, what are they being trained to do that they will continue to do after graduation? Yeah, great, great question. So one of the things that Ray said earlier was that uh, he was creating beautiful moments, right? And after the event was over, that was it. Everybody went home, you know, and 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 thought about the good time they had. Same thing with this, right? They're going to go through this class together for eight weeks. They're going to help put together that celebrity basketball game. They're going to be the, the, the stars of the show in the TV series. And everybody's going to feel good about it, right? They're going to get to know a lot of people. They're going to learn a lot of things. But what happens in the, in the 13th week, right? After the cameras are put away and everything's done, here's what happens, Rev. We got community within Love is the Answer. We've got folks all over the country. 200,000 people have seen the film. Thousands of people, tens of thousands of people have been through our training programs. Uh, we've got we've got a network of people that are staying in touch with each other. Uh, we're not just doing Zooms. We're getting out in communities. I'll give you a good example. Tomorrow, I'm going to be on another Zoom with Andrew Collins. Andrew Collins and Jamel McGee were in my film, Walking Wild Black, Love is the Answer, because Andrew was a cop who framed Jamel and sent Jamel to prison on some charges that he didn't do. Andrew got caught after, after Jamel had been in prison for years, he got to go home. Andrew went to prison for what he did. When, when Andrew and Jamel were both out years later, they're both back in the same town. They connected with each other on accident at an event. And Andrew apologized to Jamel. They became brothers and they have been working together ever since to help people in, in, in not only their community, but throughout the country on reconciliation. I'm on a Zoom tomorrow with Andrew because Jamel got sent to prison for a third time. Get this, third time for something that he didn't do. This man has spent more than a decade of his life in prison for things that he didn't do. Jamel's in right now, uh, going on four and a half years for a gun possession charge that the maximum sentence is two years. He's supposed to get out February 1st. The people in the prison are playing games with him. They're not giving him his paperwork. They're not telling them about a release date, even though it's been February 1st, set in stone for, for, for years. He's been a model citizen. He's done everything that, well, that was asked of him. And what he's being told right now, like right now as in today, he's hearing things like, we might not let you out. We might keep you in here for the next 10 years. And what's that doing to his mind? this man who has kept himself together all these years. And so Andrew is part of that community. Jamel is part of that community. We're getting on a Zoom tomorrow to, to, to talk about freedom for Jamel, free, 
free Jamel McGee. Let this man live his life in peace. And we're going to rally people as much as we can from all over the country to shine a spotlight on what this man has been going through so that the people that are behind those bars that are keeping him in there that shouldn't be keeping him in there will know that the world is watching. We'll know that they can't just play with this man's life forever, that that has got to stop. So we're, we're, we're advocates. We're teachers. We're, we're lovers of the community. We're doing everything we can to stay in touch with each other, stay in this, this, this area of common unity community to make a difference. So I hope that answers your, your question. Once someone graduates from our class, once they participate in this experience, they're family. They're what we call ohana in, in, in Hawaiian. That's family. All of you are my ohana. We're family. We're in relationship. We're going to stay in relationship. If you call me and you need something from me, if I have it, I'm going to get it for you. If I don't have it, I'm going to try to find it for you. And I'm not going to forget about you and your need until that need is met. All right. I might so, add so, AJ so, so, on that. So I, I know, I know Ray, I know you. And I, and I, and I, and I said my note to brother right now, because <laughs> I, because uh, 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 the mayor have been talking about y'all for a minute. Y'all know the mayor, Lo Lois Richardson. Um, <laughs> she, uh, and she's been promoting you in, in a larger group called Gamaliel. Mm. What, I, I'll be honest with you, in order to raise 60K, I'm going to need receipts to get people to sponsor this, that it goes beyond the kumbaya, right? Yeah. I, I, I got family. I need to know family going to be on the battlefield to make change in the community after I graduate. Um, yeah. Because those same partners that are sponsoring this are going to continue the work of, trans of systematic change in our communities. Um, because that's that's the way I operate. If I don't see an end game where communities actually change other than just being family, um, um, I'm going to have a hard time raising that money. And so just yeah. I need to get off because I, I only got really 2% right now <laughs> on my phone. Okay. I don't even know how I did this. Um, when is the new the first the next cohort beginning again? So the next the next cohort begins February twenty second. But before your phone I got dies, I got before you. your phone dies, I want to have okay. I want to have Bill Gardner unmute. Bill, this is not practice. This is not scripted. But you said it, Doc. So Bill, can you share real quick what this movement has meant to you personally? Uh, I'll tell you what, AJ, it's been a year and a half now, I think, that I was uh, introduced to you, and within a couple of emails, we were on the phone, and I've been learning about the organization, have seen the movie dozens of times now, have read the book twice, and participated in a few paintings, um, and I, I got to tell you, I've never seen anything, anything in my life that works the way this program works so that it's not just an event like i when i go to events and have a great conference and at the end of it they're asking people questions i always ask the question what do we do from here and 99 percent of the time there's nothing that's going to happen after we leave that conference what's happening here is that we're doing this work every day and we'll continue to do the work um, we're working on getting grants to bring the program to worcester we're working on bringing the film to gardner massachusetts and even though we don't have any 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 of our large grants going to do the programming in depth, I'm in it to win it, and I'm just here to do this, do whatever I can. When everybody, whenever anybody asks, say how can we inject this into our community? So um, with people getting um, you know out of attitudes and motivation like that, um, this is a, a win win for anybody who participates. Thank you, Bill. And if and if I may add, AJ, to uh, Reverend Tillman, when you mentioned Lois Richardson out of Ypsilanti, what we did up there, and I say we, our National Association signed an agreement, a five-year agreement that we were going to make a difference in Ypsilanti. We've done that now. We've got two organizations up there called Educate Youth and Mentor to Youth. Through Educate Youth, we were able to get a congressional grant 
And Reverend Tillman, if you want to send me your information, I can send you information on what our organization has done in Ypsilanti and in really far as the Detroit metro area. So Lois Richardson now is my older sister. So you can call her and tell her that you met Nat and that we are very much engaged in Ypsilanti to make a difference. So when you talk about that long game, that's what we're talking about there. We signed that agreement back in 2018. I am, We are still there. We plan on being there much longer. And we formed a council of elders up there. They've got a grant up there. So we're working very long in that long game, what you're talking about there in Ipsy. All right, fellas. Look, I I I, I literally got one percent. Uh, again, I'm sold. Selling <laughs> me is not to be the challenge. I got to sell the sponsors. I got to sell the sponsors on this. So I I I I I I'll follow up with Ray, uh, and, and AJ and 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 Nat. I already got your information. Lois gave to me a while back, so I I will follow back. Yep. Appreciate y'all. Beautiful. Thank you so much, and we will get those receipts for you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you pastor all right. all right sir anybody else any questions we've got uh seven or eight minutes before we're gonna wrap up we can wrap up early or we can keep on going i want to make sure all questions are answered you're also welcome to share any thoughts or ideas Yeah, AJ, how you doing? I'm doing good, sir. Good to see you. It's been a yeah, long it's, time. It's good to see you. I'm telling you, um, you know, when Ray and I was together, uh, he told me about this call. When I, when he told me you was going to be up there and you part of this, I was excited. So it's good to see you doing what you do the best, and that is helping people. Um, and then when I get up here, I didn't know Mr. Austin was going to be up here. That's my guy too. We go way back, and uh, out. So I'm good. I'm in good company. So Ray just told me a little bit about it. Now I have I have I have a big vision about this. I'm excited about this. This is great. This is great. Um, because I know, I know the one who's involved and who's putting this together. I know you. You know your heart and the things that you you guys have done in the past and you'll continue on doing, and. It, and you never stop. So you're, you're still doing it. So I'm love to see that you guys are still, you're still at it. So I'm glad to be a part of it and glad I was on this call. I got some great ideas that we're going to talk about and put together. So this is exciting. I'm glad to be a part of it. Amen. Thank you, Greg. I'm looking forward to us doing, doing some of this good work together. Um, Veronica asked, what's the timeline? Uh, as I mentioned, we're looking for four uh, sponsors of programs for this year. We want to go quality over quantity. Uh, we plan on increasing that to eight to 10 next year, uh, but uh, we're looking for four. And so the timeline is uh, when people, uh, when sponsors sign up, we get to work. You know, we set the date, we do the work. And uh, the, the hope is that we will have four completed uh, by the by the end of this year. Any other questions? All right. Now we'll I'll, I'll I'll say this while we're waiting for the next question. Oh, go ahead, Carol. Go ahead, Carol. Well, AJ, you know I always have a proverb. <laughs> yes, and indeed. Since it was Martin Luther King's birthday last week, I just wanted to read one quote of his. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Timely. Thank you. Timely. Thank you, Carol. Carol's been doing some incredible work uh, with us in, in Bucks County. Uh, she went through uh, the the uh, the class and 
she's been helping out with with some screenings and she's gone to schools and gotten elementary schools and high schools involved uh gotten students to make videos and make art and uh some some move if i played one of those videos right now all y'all be bursting into tears i'm telling you so I, i'm gonna spare you that but I, i'll send y'all <laughs> the links to those because uh I don't know if y'all have Kleenex uh, nearby, but Carol's been doing some amazing work and um, thank you. Uh, continues to do so. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. you. AJ, you gave a nice little trip uh, tidbit on that with Carol and dealing with the students because yeah. looking around, folks, we're in the human resources area and I put my HR hat on. What we've got to do, and this is why our passion in terms of our organizations is involved, our children. We've got to do it for our children. In terms of that corporate leadership and all, as Carol has done with the elementary, middle school, and high school, we're seeing that. We've got to do it for our children. On our national organization, we want, we're out there dealing with the HBCUs, for an example. So if you've got connection with the HBCUs, we want to get them involved in this. We've got four that we're dealing with right now here in Maryland, the four HBCUs, as you know, Morgan, Coppin, University of Maryland, Eastern Shore, Bowie, as well as Howard. We want to see, and I give you, this is why when we, whenever we go, we take AJ with us. And this is why we have that strategic partnership. So whatever the NHR is going, you see love is the answer going there. We're looking for more and more people of color going into the field of human resources so they can have that pipeline. So when I look at now, and I've said to AJ many times and even to our membership, I've got three grandchildren. And when Reverend said the long game, we're in it for the long game. I've got a 10, 13 and 17 year old. I wanna see love is the answer be relevant and thriving. When my 10-year-old is 20, when my 13-year-old is 23, and my 17-year-old is 27. And if I'm still around then, I'll be 87. So you can do the math. I'm here for the long game. God willing, hey, this is what we're talking about. We've got to make a difference, all of us in here, for our young people. And set that tone for them to th thrive survive and move on. Love is the answer. So that's the long game. So when the pastor said long game, we're in it for the long game. Whatever AJ wants to do, I'm committed as a chairman of this organization to say, we've got your back. We're here. So I wanna make sure that everybody knows that. We don't just talk, we walk. Amen. Uh, we've also got D. D. Gwynn and P.S. Civiletti and Cliff Wright, uh, team members uh, on here. Uh, they're doing amazing work. Um, we got a bunch of people that are on our team that couldn't make it uh, tonight, but um, uh, if you if you stay involved with us, you'll meet them. This is a wonderful family uh, of people that are committed to making a difference. And uh, it has been said that we need to do this for the children, all of our children, you know, white, black, rich, poor, Democrat, Republican parents, what, whatever, you know, we got to love on, on, on these kids. And, and that's, that's really where the rubber meets the road for us. Um, you know, we're teaching adults, uh, but we're also teaching uh, children. We, we've got a mascot, Kona, the love dog that, um, is 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 uh, getting out there and helping children all over the country, teaching them how to love their neighbor, and they get it. The kids get it. It's us that you know we don't get it. We we don't forgot. You know, a lot of times we you know we go about our days very selfishly, quite quite frankly, me included. You know, and and we got to spend more time in community with each other to help other people. And it's so simple. It's so simple. There, there was a, I'll say this and I'll shut up. There was a family in, in Georgia that needed help. And we were teaching a workshop. 
And what do you do when you teach a workshop? Teachers teach and students learn, right? But here's what we did that was different. Halfway through the workshop, I said to everybody in the audience, raise your hand if you know someone who's hurting right now, right now, this minute. Half the hands went up in that audience. And I, I singled someone out. I said, mm -hmm. ma'am, will you tell me uh, the story about the, the person that you're thinking about? Turns out family was homeless. They needed help. They were they were in dire straits. With, I challenged that class to put love into action. And within weeks, the mom had a new job in her career field at a hotel. They had a new place to stay. They had all new furniture, all new dishes. They had Thanksgiving meals sent over opportunities for the children. That's what happened in real time in real life. And I checked on, in on them recently. This was three or four years ago. They're still thriving. That community is still supporting them. And now they're able to give back to the community that they're in. That's how this works. We help someone, they pay it forward. And with all the nastiness that's going on in the world right now, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. And we got the power to deliver that. All right. So let's make it happen. I thank you for your time. I'm going to let you out of here on time. And uh, we're going to continue this work. The train is moving. Hop on. Go go on this ride with us, folks. You'll never regret it. This is a, this is a wonderful experience. And um, we can change the world together. I know we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thank all. You. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, all. everyone. Absolutely. Everybody, you stay all. safe. Stay safe That's and healthy. Dr. G, right. you got your hand up? <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, Stafford. Hey, I, yeah, <laughs> Thank D. You. I got in late, but thank you all. <laughs> thank you. We're recording, thank so I'll make everyone. sure you get the link. All right. Okay, please do. Florence, Thank good you. meeting you. Look forward to meeting you, seeing you again. Carol, great. Pia. Hi. <laughs> hey, D. Hey, D. <laughs> Greg. Greg. Hey, Carol. Stafford, how yeah. are you? Don't get, Thank uh, you. get to know you. All right, Mike. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. Here, happy New Year. Hiding happy behind you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great night. God bless. God bless. All righty. Bye-bye.